contour plots on the Inspire are not built in uh, as a function on the Inspire, so you have to build it yourself. But um, so I'll show you how to do that now. So I, I have this graph z1 x y equals sine x times y, and this is what that graph looks like. And I and I want to I want to make a contour plot of this. So a contour plot is just the, a 2D representation of a 3D graph by intersecting the graph with a plane. So I can show that here by making a trace. So you can see where the plane intersects the graph. I'm going to have a line, right, or, or a curve. And and what does that curve look like? Well, that curve looks like, like it would look like this, right? I, I'd have, here's one intersection, here's the other intersection. So on one side and the other side, right? Here's one side, here's the other side. So, uh, so how do we build this? So here, I'll, sh I'll show you how to do it. So uh, I'll start with graphing the graph that we're going to use, and after watching this, you should be able to extrapolate and, and do this with any graph. Um, I haven't figured out a way to, to make it automated yet, but that'll be for somebody else. So here, I'll, I'll clean this up. I'll change, increase the resolution to make it look nicer. Okay. So this is the graph that we want to make a contour plot of. So now I need to open up another calculator page here. So I'll start with c1 of x, y. What does that equal? That's sine of x, y, right? Now this is in terms of x and y. So z equals, or z1 equals, of x, y equals sine x, y. So I need this in terms of just one variable, which is x. y of x equals uh, some function in terms of x. So I can do that by solving z1 x, y equals some constant value. Now that, that constant value is going to be the value of the, pl the height of the plane, right? So I'll just make it equal to z here. And, and I'll solve for, also what am I need to solve? I need to solve for y, right? Because uh, I need something in uh, y of x form. So here I get two solutions. And I have some conditions on, on what my plane can be. So here I will, uh, so now, so now I have two functions. And these functions, I can, I can define these in, 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 on a plane, on a 2D plane. So the first one, here is going to be equal to this first one, f1 of x. Now, this is in t currently, this is in terms of, well, let's see, how many variables? 1, 2, 3, right? n1, x, and z. z is just going to be a constant because we can only evaluate the contour plot at one plane at a time, one z value at a time. x is this this variable that, that we're trying to isolate. n1 arises from the periodic nature of, of the sine and cosine functions and, and such. So this this will stay in here. And now the way that we can overcome this one is, is by turning this into a sequence. So now we're, we're going to be we're going to graph a sequence. And what this will do is is it'll, it'll just graph lots of lines, however many I specify, which I'll specify here. So n1, I'll, I'll specify. Uh, 20, negative 10 to 10, 20 lines, right? And I'm going to change this to H because it doesn't recognize N1, just I don't know why, but it doesn't, so I have to change this to H2. Okay, so now I have I have this first this first solution done. So now I'll do the second one, F2 of X is equal to sequence. And if you don't know what the sequence function is, you can look it up in the Cast reference guide. It's a good book. From uh, h from negative ten to ten changes to an h. Now this is my second solution here. Okay, so now I have that defined, and then I'll insert graph, two D graph. Now if I try to define this right away, nothing's going to happen because I don't have I don't have z. I don't have z defined yet, so I'll define that right now. 
by using a slider so that I can change the height of my plane dynamically so I know what's going on. So we'll call this Z. Now I still don't see anything because Z is e currently equal to 5. And what did we know about Z? Z had, had these restrictions, right? It can only be in between negative 1 and 1. So Z is 5, so that won't work. So I'll just change this first. Negative 1 and 1s, so those are the bounds that I have. And now if I make, so here I have z equal to 0.2, and uh, let me change the step size on this slider just so I can see things better. I'm changing to 0.1. Okay, so now I have one, one, uh, one of my solutions, which was that first solution, f1 of, uh, of x. So now I can do the other one. So now, so now I have these these uh, contour lines, right? So now let's check to see if this makes sense. So let's go back to this graph, and I'll look at it from above. Okay, let me bring up my my uh, trace back. Okay, so let me. What does it look like if I if I just do it from the top here? So if I have where z is equal to one up here z is equal to 1. This this plane, it just touches the tops of, of these mountain ranges, right? I, I have I, I have an intersection at the very tops of all these. So I have one here, I have one here, I have one here, I have them all over. And since it's at the very top, I'll just see lines in the contour plot. And that's and that's what I see here. So if z is equal to 1, which is the height of this plane, and this this plane is at z equals 1, and here it's 1, I just see the lines, right? Now, and let's see if this makes sense. I, I should see one, two of them here that are in quadrant 1 and, and 3 that are close to the origin. And if I go back here, that's what I see. I see one here in 1 and, and 3 that are close to the origin, and I see you know, ones here that are far away, and these ones are far away, right? So, now what happens if I go down to negative 1? So if I move my plane downwards, okay, so now it's underneath here, so now if, if I look on top, so my, my plane is underneath here, now it's t it's, it'll be touching the bottoms of these now, so it'll be touching these valleys here, so I should see one in quadrant, uh, two and four that are close to the origin, right? And, and that's what I see. So they're here close to the origin. Now what happens if I if I go just a little bit underneath one or negative one? And I see these two lines and these two lines represent these hills that that split. So if I look here, if I intersect it just below here, I, I have these two lines, right? Here's one, here's one. So z is currently equal to 0.5. So now what happens if I make z equal to 0.5 over here? That's what I see. I see here's one side of that hill. Here's the other side of the hill. There's one side. There's the other side. And there's another one. And there's another one. And that's what I see, right? Okay. So, so that means that th where this plane is intersecting, that that's this is what those lines look like, and this is what the contour plot looks like. So, this isn't a very elegant solution. I mean, I wish I could automate this, but um, my programming abilities uh, it's not that advanced. So, if you can figure it out, to, uh, I want it to be so that you can just give it a function, and it it'll spit out the contour plot and as well as this three D plot, and then you know automatically define here these these. Uh, these restrictions for z and, and automatically put them in for this values of slider. If you can do that, that um, let me know because that's what I want to see. So that's it.